Okay, uh, in the next tutorial, I want to show you that I managed to get this navigational bar looking right, and I'll show you what I finally decided on. Um, here's the CSS, the final CSS uh, for this. So we've got two header divs here. Um, I put a font into the header, controlling the font that goes anywhere in the header. Then uh, the image floated left, we saw that. Then navigational main, right? Um, here are the settings for navigational main. I added a nav-main um, for any A element or anchor element, including uh, spe specifically the uh, a link or, um, uh, let's see here, and I want to get rid of that, that's incorrect. And also, let me make sure that looks right still. Hit refresh, still looks correct, even though. And also, um, anchor element uh, visited links. So, uh, display, block display. This padding was done in uh, M's and, and pixels. You might want to play with that. Well, I'm not going to talk about M's right now, but M's are a different way of um, uh, spacing things based on the size of the font versus pixel dimensions. It's based on um, the dimensions of the font itself and then spacing accordingly. Um, and then there's these images that we had. These little images uh, are, I wanted to show them to you. These images are little tiny squ uh, rectangles of purple that you can see how small it is here that will tile um, vertically. And they're just little tiny um, JPEGs. And um, you could see them, how they were laid out. If I change the margin here, and I'll change it back to, let's say, um, 80. I change these margins, by the way. Let's say File, Save, right? On Nav Main, for my Nav Bar, if I change the margin, you'll see it moves up. You can see those little blocks on the left and the right of each piece of um, if each link, so how they're functioning there. And ideally what you could do is you could change the color there, or do something like that. I'm not even sure if I need them per se. Um, so let's go back here and I'm going to change that back to 100 and file save. The other thing I want to do is I want to move this whole thing uh, left a little bit because in the window um, it's resizing quite nicely, right? We, we've said that it's, it's a fluid layout where things are resizing, but if I make the window too small, all of a sudden that drops down. And so what I could do is push this over to the left a little bit so that the, the window could get significantly smaller and still look good and, and, and be correct, right? And you want it to be as fluid as possible. So um, that's what I'm going to do. So I'll go in here, and these are the three nav divs here, nav main, nav main, nav main. Um, I'm going to change that, let's say, to 160, file, save. And I believe this is the left margin. And hit refresh, and that slides it over. So now it could get, you know, this small before breaking. And that's a pretty small window. I mean, that, that would work on an 800 by 600 uh, resolution monitor, right? And if I wanted to, I could go a little bit, even a little bit shorter, change it to 150 and call it good for now. So, um, so I changed these margins. And then uh, one thing that I was able to do is in my finished piece before on my CSS, I had um, all these header styles not beyond uh, header image, I had header, unordered list style, a link style, and a, um, anchor tag styles for the header, but really it's just being applied to the nav main styling. So what I decided was is I moved some of that stuff into the nav main, and now I have less CSS styling happening here. You can see here that I was able to just use these two header divs and then put some of those other things right into my nav main divs 
and still have the exact same effect. Now I might need to change that later as I try to if I try to put more um, text up here in these um, in the header. You know maybe I want um, to have styling more styling in the header for text and stuff. But for right now it's working fine. So I'm happy with my CSS. And the next thing I want to um, show you is I decided to put in um, another uh, image into my header. So on my final piece, I decided to add, let's see here. Now on my final piece, I decided to add this image up here on the right. And I'm going to show you now um, how I do that. First of all, in Photoshop, you have to have an image. Then you crop the image to what you want, let's say. Right? Crop the image to, let's say, what you want. All right? Then I'll zoom in and show you what I did. Okay, there's my, on my layers, right? It's a background layer here. I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging it to the new layer tool. So copy it, and then I'm going to delete the background. So now it's unlocked layer, right? Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mask on it. So layer mask right there. And I'll get uh, hold down the paint bucket to get back to the gradient tool and just make a, um, a gradient tool from, I want it to be from black to white. So this gradient. And now you can see that this layer mask has a gradient from black to white in it, which enables the image to look like it's fading in from transparent to fading in the image. So I can do that a couple of times here till I get it correct. Right? Okay, now the mountains are fading in. Right? I like that. And then here at the bottom, I want to fade it in at the bottom too. So what I'm going to do is I'll grab my rectangular marquee tool, feather it, let's say 12 pixels, hit enter. And I'm going to make a big selection here. Well, not a, too big of a selection. Click OK. And layers, I want to make sure I'm clicked on this picture, not on my, um, not on my uh, layer mask, but on the image. So I'll click there on the image, right? And I'll try that again. Okay, now it didn't appreciate that because my feathering is too much. So what I'll do is I'll reduce the feathering down to 5 pixels. And there we go. And then what I can also do is I can move this mask over a little bit, which I'm going to do. Right? And then I'll just hit delete. And I'll delete a couple times. And that feathers the bottom to transparency. So it's feathering to transparency on the bottom, feathering to transparency on the light on the right. And all I have to do now is make sure that it's the right image size for my um, to fit in my header. So I'm going to do image, image size, look at the dimensions, right? And eventually what I'll do is I'll hit File Save. And I'll hit File Save for Web. And since I have transparency in this, instead of a JPEG, which does not support transparency, I saved it as a PNG 24 um, bit PNG with transparency and I saved it and what it ended up with was an image let's see here an image that looks like oh there's the JPEG um, actually I, I looks like I faded it into the blue color so I didn't use transparency but it would be better to use transparency because then it would be more um, uh, adaptable later if I decided to change the background color. So um, that was not smart of me to not use transparency. So I would go with this PNG 24 bit, right? So I can hit, let's say on this, I'd hit save and I'd be all good. Okay, so anyway, you have this little image that you're going to now float on your site on the right hand side. And you can see I did it there. So now I just want to show you how I did that with the CSS 